What's happening guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Watch With Us channel. This is a fun episode for me because what I tend to enjoy the most out of doing this whole YouTube thing is interviewing other guys, talking about other people, about watches. So in this episode, I got the opportunity to sit down with a, a new friend and he's quickly become a good friend, Chris from the Watch Chris channel. We talked about his channel, what it's about, what's his inspiration, why he started it. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. And before we cut to that interview, if any of you are interested in being a guest on the Watch With Us channel, why don't you shoot me an email at jk at WWU Media. Let me know that you're interested. Let me know what your interest or your take on the watch industry is, whether you're a collector, whether you work in the industry, whether you have a channel or a blog. I'm totally interested in having discussions with people like you who love watches, love to talk about watches, and if you think you might have something interesting to talk about and to entertain the viewers of this channel, shoot me that email. So without further ado, let's jump over to my interview with Chris and learn about him and the Watch Chris channel. Hey guys, welcome back to the Watch With Us channel. My name is John Keel and I'm here with a very good friend of mine, Chris, actually a new friend, uh, but we seem to have a ton in common. We've had some great conversations and um, this is a new series that we're going to be calling Talking Time. So essentially about the series really quickly. We're going to be talking with random individuals who are either in the watch business, have podcasts or YouTube uh, channels, or just collectors. So uh, I'll restate at the end of this, but if you're interested in being a guest, reach out to me and we'll get you on the show. And uh, welcome, Chris. What's happening, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. It's going well, man. It's going really well. All, 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 things, con all things considered that it's uh, locked down still. It's... Uh, in most of the country, particularly here in New York, where you and I both are, um, things are going well. Everybody's happy and healthy and safe. So thank God. I think under most circumstances, we probably would have done this in person. However, we are in, on Zoom, even though we're just uh, actually just a few miles apart. And they're really not that yeah. far apart from each other. So. Yeah. So a little little quick backstory. I mean, Chris, Chris and I live maybe 30 minutes from each other, if that. Yeah. Um, he's, got a, he's got a kick-ass YouTube channel. And um, we just met re recently through uh, through one of the brands I deal with, NTH. Yep. So I, I reached out to NTH to uh, see if I could review one of their watches. And they said I could, of course. So they sent me a, a watch on loan, which is really just a, a really well-made watch. I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed by it. And I'm, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and a uh, review of that watch coming out pretty shortly. Uh, but they also, at the same time, gave me your contact. So here we are. Here we are. I recently did a video uh, where we uh, sort of interviewed John from my channel, and so now we're doing the reverse. So yeah, so awesome, man. This is this is fun stuff. This is kind of what we love doing is is talk and watch. I think the other night is funny. I mean, we we probably went 40, 45 minutes or something, but we probably could have gone on for two hours, you know. And yeah, uh, it's a great thing about watches, right? And I think that's why a lot of people are watching the channel, my channel, your channel, and all these other channels that are out there, because. Yeah it's what we're into. It's pretty good stuff. Um, yeah. Before we kick off and before I, uh, we learn all about you and your channel and, and everything like that, what are you wearing on your wrist today, bro? Ah, uh, I am wearing the crew automatic ghost version three. That's a cool uh, looking watch. Yeah. This is a skeletonized, uh, uh, they're, I guess they're an independent brand. They, uh, I, I have been working with them a little bit, and they, they send me watches to review uh, on loan, and this is one of the watches that I actually have on on loan today. Uh, it's titanium with a ceramic bezel, and it's uh, completely skeletonized. Really cool watch. What kind of movement's in that thing? It has a Swiss Tech movement, okay. which is sort of like an Eta clone. It's, it's sort of like a Salita type movement, STP, one of those. Yeah. Um, but the movement itself is completely skeletonized and they PVD coat the entire movement. Um, they use a whole bunch of different materials. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I'm guessing it's super light, right? It's, it's actually pretty substantial for, because it is 43 millimeters, so it's not incredibly small. Okay. Uh, but it is substantial. It's, it's, like I said, it's titanium, but it's not, it's not uh, that, that light. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, not to put you on the spot, do you know the uh, suggested retail price of that offhand? Uh, 
$2,950. Right on. Cool. So you do know. Awesome. Yes, I, awesome. Just did, I just literally filmed a uh, review for it. So unboxing and a review. So I, I am uh, uh, very familiar with the specs on the watch right now. That's cool. That's, I mean, you know, it's funny because when we do talks like this sometimes and, you know, you ask certain questions and, you know, they may be simple, they may be not simple, whatever it may be, but it's like, you know, sometimes it's like, and, and I do this too when people ask me questions, it's like, oh crap, I should know this and I'm on camera and I don't know this, you know, so, um, but the power of editing. So since you knew it, I'm not going to edit this out, right? <laughs> cool. So, so tell us about, tell us about you real quick. Tell us about, you know, your channel and you know, what's going on? What, what, who are you, bud? So, I am a watch collector. I've always been a watch collector. I started collecting watches probably in, around the age of 14 years old. Um, and uh, essentially, I, I worked in a couple of different industries. I started out in the restaurant business. I was a chef for many years, for about 10 years. Uh, I worked in uh, Disney World for two years where I took an apprenticeship and I became a chef while I was there. Um, and then I moved back to New York and I worked for uh, Robert De Niro in... Um, uh, uh, Nobu 57. I helped open up that restaurant. I worked at Del Posto for a little while. So uh, you're, you're a real chef. You're not. So yeah, I was, a I was a chef. I was running, I, I was running, uh, uh, kitchens and, and doing all that. And then, uh, at some point in my life, similar to your story, I didn't want to work every day. Um, every holiday, you know, travel, I didn't travel, but it was, you know, New Year's Eve, you had to be there, Christmas, all the major holidays, weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, it did not matter. You were, I was there all the time. And, uh, you know, the hours really got to me. I was in the business for about 10 years. And then I made this switch uh, to working in finance. Um, and when I did that, uh, my lifestyle changed a little bit. And I was able to uh, start collecting watches. And I always had an affinity of watches. I was a collector my whole entire life. And then I really became a collector when I started, uh, you know, when I changed careers, started making uh, the big bucks, <laughs> not, really, not, not, not entirely. I just had a more stable life and I actually yeah. had more disposable income. I was, I was essentially a working poor person when I, when I was in the <laughs> restaurant business. Uh, and then I, and then I actually I got a, um, a more stable job, I would call it. And yeah. then I was able to start collecting. So, well, I'd also, um, I'd also imagine that watches are a whole lot more wearable when you're not a chef uh, versus being in the kitchen, right? Like, I mean, I've, I've seen, you know, some of these cooking shows, like the, these real restaurant shows. I mean, that's a, that's a physical business, right? And I'd be afraid to, to destroy a good watch. Yeah, I was watching a Hodinkee, I think it was a, a Talking Watches episode of, of something like that. And it was a chef on there and he had a uh, System 51. Yeah. And I was looking at it. And, I, you know, I was no longer a chef, but I, you know, I still cook all the time and I, I love cooking. Sure. And I, I was looking at the video and I was just like, there's no way that guy wears assistant 51 in a, in a there's no way, there's no. no way it would never survive. You, right. your hands are in water every five seconds. Uh, it has a, uh, you know, a plastic crystal. It would be scratched yeah. up. Thing looked brand new. It was like, there's no way he's wearing it. Right. Or he's he's a celebrity chef, so he's never cooking. So that's the only way you could really wear. Right, I mean, right. right. He's, he's walking around pointing at people, telling them what to do. Yeah, exactly. I was working 15-hour <laughs> days, you yeah. know, six days a week. It, it, was, it was grueling, and it was not, it was not easy. Uh, so I, was in, I did that for 10 years, and I, I just needed to, you know, start to, you know, you know make a life and, and settle down. And, and so sure. I, I made the switch. Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, we like we spoke on your channel uh, the other night, you know, nobody can understand that more than me. I mean, I was traveling 45, 46 weeks a year, Monday through Friday. And, you know, the big, the big jump for me was when I got engaged and I was like, well, gee, do I want to be away from my wife 90% of the time? And, and I, I truly didn't. So, you know, making a lifestyle switch is, is or a big life switch like that is not easy, but certainly, you know, if you can do it uh, well enough, it pays off. I mean, and then, you know, for me, the big jump too was going from a regular job, you know, where I was gone 50 hours a week to working for myself where I have just much more freedom and I probably work more, you know, and, um, but it's, that's great, man. It's great that you can make that switch and, you know, get into what you want to do more. And plus now, I mean, you've got children, so you have more of a, 
more time with the family, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more time. I actually have vacation time where I was getting like five vacation days when I was a chef, even though I was a chef uh, and I was was in business for 10 years. uh, I had like five vacation days. A year. (laughs) Yes. A year. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, No, that's crazy. That never happened. Uh, So back then I really collected, I, my focus of collecting was on uh, major, two major brands, Seiko. Uh, I've always been a big lover of Seiko and then uh, Hamilton. Okay. And then I moved into, I became somewhat of a Paneristi and then I, I really got into Panerai. Uh, that was really early on in, in when Panerai's first came out uh, and I became kind of obsessed. And then eventually I bought a, I bought a Panerai. Uh, and now if, you, if you're familiar with my channel, I have a few Panerai. I love Panerai and, uh, and, um, and I, I collect all different brands. I still love Seiko. Um, and I still love, I still, I love micro brands. I got into micro brands, uh, just a few years ago and I'm really into micro brands now. Um, and so, like I said, I, I, I've been a collector essentially since I've been, since I was like 14 years old. And, um, I also represent a few brands. So I represent, uh, Vicentera, which is a, a small, uh, independent brand that is Swiss, uh, and they make really special watches, I would say. They have a small 7-millimeter uh, grade, uh, grade 5 titanium globe. Uh, it's sort of like a mini Grubel 4Z a little bit yeah. uh, or a Beauvais. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, got, I, I've, I started working with a couple of different brands. And uh, so I work with a couple of different brands and I represent a few different brands. So... Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's amazing. And that, and that's all because it started as a passion, right? It wasn't, it wasn't like yeah. you were looking to represent brands cause that's your business and that's what you wanted to make your living in. Right. Right. That was all before I even had a YouTube channel and, and, and then I, uh, eventually got into, uh, you know, the YouTube thing and I started just for the fun of it. And, and literally that's the reason why I do it today because I, it's, I don't, it's not like I make money doing YouTube or anything like that. I love uh, talking about watches and I, and this is exactly the, this is exactly what I'm after, you know, meeting people like you, talking to people like you, learning things from you and, and just discussing watches and hearing your story. And, and that's what I want to do. And, and, and the reason why I started my channel is because I want to talk about watches. I want to talk about the watches I love. Yeah. Um, and the main focus of my channel is really, bang for buck. That's really what I'm all about. I was going to ask you that. I mean, what's, what's like, you know, I, I always feel when I watch YouTube channels, like I, I think when we started the watch with us channel, it was really to bring multiple hosts in to cover everything in the industry, because I feel like most YouTubers have a pretty, you know, a pretty set narrow, like, this is what I love. This is what I talk about. Are you one of those channels where everything is like within a certain price range or, or, or are you broader or is it kind of a combination of both? I mean, t- if you had to explain to somebody exactly what your avenue in the world of YouTube is, I mean, what, what would be your, what are you doing? So the easiest way to answer that is to give you some examples of watches that I'll review or even watches that I own. So I'll talk about Casio. Yep. And I'll talk about a Casio World Timer or, um, you know, they're, they're cheaper watches. Um, and then I do modifications on them myself or whatever that might be. And then I'll talk about Seiko, like I mentioned, and micro brands. Then I have Omegas that I talk about. And then I'll, I, I have, in my own personal collection, I have Vacheron, which I, I'm, I started collecting Vacherons as well. So... I'm running the gamut between, you know, $16 watches and $50,000 watches. Right. But in my opinion, that, that $16 watch has a lot of value in it because uh, it offers so much for that $16. But at the same time, the Vacheron, like I have a Vacheron World Timer uh, overseas, which yeah. it is, it's, it's not entirely a popular watch. Uh, it's, it's not the watch that... Beautiful, um, though. It's beautiful. Like people, people, uh, you know, it's not the Instagram watch or whatever, and you can get them at a, at a pretty good discount. And I'm not saying that that is a, a high value, uh, you know, proposition, but right. in my opinion, it's, it's the underdog when compared to, you know, the Nautilus or the Royal Oak. 
And because of that, you can get it under list price and and that's the reason why it's a value watch, in my opinion. Yeah. So everything that I own, I, I'm all about not paying over list price. <laughs> I will never pay over list price for anything. That's why I don't own a Rolex right yeah. now. Uh, I, I've owned Rolexes in the past, and, I, and, and um, I have friends who love Rolexes. I like the brand. I love the brand. But I would never buy a Rolex right now because I would never ever pay over list price for a watch. Right. That's the you know the 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 way I am, and I know there are people who will go crazy about someone who says that. Yeah, for sure. But, but that's part. That's so that's here. that's the part of this whole fun of this whole watch world, right? Like, you know, I know a guy who spent, you know, probably twenty over list on a Batek. And I know people gave him so much crap about it. And then he sold it for, or... then he sold it for, you know, 80% above list you know, a year or two later. And who's the one laughing then? So, but the, the differences that we all have, and if we, you know, I think if it's fun, like if we jab each other and have fun with it, you know, yeah, people might go look at what you just said and be like, you're crazy. But on the same token, part of that is the fun of the watch business, right? Because- <laughs> We're all different and it's fun. That's pretty yeah. awesome. I buy watches. I, I always buy a watch and I say to myself, I have to love this watch yeah. and I have to expect nothing in return. So yeah. instead of buying like the 5711 and buying it for 20% 20, 20 over list and then selling it for 80 over list, I'm not concerned with that. And if that happens, great. Uh, yeah. And my intent is to keep the watch and love that watch and just enjoy it. And if I end up not enjoying it and not loving it, and I don't really, you know, love the watch, and I want to sell it. And if I, if I make money on the watch, that's fine. But I have to accept the fact that I might lose money on the watch. Sure. And it, you know, I don't look at them as investments. No. Um, and, 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 you know, that's just the way I am. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it, sorry. I, I was just going to say for all the years I've been in the watch industry, anytime I've ever heard anybody utter the words, a watch is an investment. It just makes me ugh, makes me cringe because I've heard salespeople say that to cli potential clients when right. they're trying to sell a watch. Oh, you you can wear this for five years and sell it for more than you paid for. I mean, to me, it just makes me cringe. Yeah, because watches to me yeah. aren't an investment. They, I mean, look, they can be obviously. Yeah, but that shouldn't be the motivation of buying one, in my opinion. No, if you want to invest, buy some stocks, buy some property. Yeah. <laughs> right you know, do that it's a little bit more stable yeah especially in this environment yeah and, and marketable just, yeah and 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 just you know enjoy the hobby and enjoy watches now teach his own if you want to buy a watch and it's going to be your investment and you want to do that that's that's up to you and I, i'm you know i don't care that's that's I, I don't judge people on what they do and how they right. purchase but that's the way i feel and that's that's the message that i i give on my channel also a lot i do a lot of videos like that where i give that but that's, that's how I feel. And, yeah. yeah. Couldn't see you advising anybody on buying a watch because it's an investment, right? No. no. Yeah. yeah. I, the other thing about my channel, um, I would say uh, the reason why I like micro brands and, uh, is because I, I, like the, I like a watch that uh, I'm not going to see everybody else wearing. Yeah. So I, I like to buy a watch that I know is um, – special in some way and that not every other person that you know when you're walking down the street you're going to see 10 other people with the same watch i like that and that's why i like a micro brand um and and like a watch like that i have on or nth or alta what we were talking about the other night yep you could walk around uh, you could go to the mall you're not going to see by anybody with that watch on you're going to see somebody with a rolex on yeah you're going to see sure. a submariner for yeah. sure and you're or a Speedmaster or, right. you know, and I mean, look, and these are watches I love and I have a Speedmaster in a case right behind me, but hundred percent, I I've always been a big fan of, of what's different. And, you know, if, if, if you and I were like standing online in Starbucks and you know, you were wearing that, I, I would be like, dude, what do you got on your wrist? Like, right. you know, and that's, that's to me yeah. what I dig. I, yeah. I think it's fun. Yeah. 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 So how long have you had the channel? Uh, it's just over a year. Okay. Just over a year. Yeah. I started. And no good. Yeah. yeah, I think I started in um, January, end of January, uh, twenty nineteen. Yeah. 
And what, what was, what was the catalyst? So what was, what, what was the thing that made you say like to put that first video up? I bought two watches, uh, an SBDC 061 Seiko SBDC 061, the baby Marine master. Okay. And I loved it so much that I just said to myself, I have to make a video about this. I have to tell people about this watch because other people need to buy this watch. And then I bought another watch at the same time. And that was a um, Zelos Swordfish. Nice. And I did not like that watch. Okay. Uh, I felt that it was not finished well. The bracelet was really not finished well. And then um, eventually I actually got into Zelos a little bit. And um, I've bought a few Zelos since. Yeah. And they progressively have gotten better. Okay. But that, original swordfish uh, not swordfish yeah it was a swordfish i think yeah or great white that was it it was not good and okay. uh i i immediately sold that off and and got rid of it and i, I just thought it was uh not that great okay and then, uh, so i made a video about that so those are the two watches those first two watches and, and i was just like i have to make videos about these and i did and i put them on that's uh, great i mean yeah. that's that's I often get people say, well, you know, I would love to do, you know, YouTube, but how do you do it? Where do you start this, that? I'm like, honestly, shoot a couple of videos that you never intend to even publish. Yeah. Please don't go look at those two videos, by the way, because they oh. were shot in my, in my, I'm going to be completely honest, in my bathroom. Like, I had to, it was the only, I have two kids. It was the only quiet place in my house. Oh, no, honey, I'm busy. <laughs> so I took my, my, first off, I took my cell phone. I think I was holding it. I didn't have a tripod. That's and I was awesome. Just like, oh, this is the SPD. You know what I mean? And it was like, Horrible. If, if you go back and look at those videos, horrible. Uh, just the video quality, everything was bad. Audio. You know that's the first thing I'm doing when we're done, right? Yeah, dog barking <laughs> in the background, my dog, like, you know, everything. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, I, I'm friendly with a lot of good, you know, a lot of the good YouTubers that a lot of people watch, you know. And, you know, for giggles, if you go back and watch everybody's earlier YouTube stuff, most of it's a nightmare, but it's fun, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. especially... When, when the channel progresses so much and the quality gets so good and the, the audio and the lighting and you, they get new lenses and everything, all, all of a sudden it's like, you're looking at mine, I'm using a webcam on the top of my, cam, on the top of my computer and it's like, you know, I've never gotten into that production level of stuff. But you see some of these YouTubers who have amazing quality. And if yeah. you go back and look at their first thing, their first, first, you know, half a year, a year, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know? When you first start out, you're, you're, you're just basically, it's not like uh, we're actors, you know what I mean? We're just regular people who just wanted to throw yeah. a video on YouTube. And then the thing is, is that you, you start getting comments on the video and you start talking to people and you get interested in doing it more. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, you know what? I have, at that time, I had 36 watches in my collection. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do a video for all 36 of these watches. Yeah. By the time I even got I, I had I had sold watches and bought watches and then but I I went through all my watches as as I bought and sold and, and and then I got to the end and I was like, okay, so am I gonna keep on doing this channel? And then I decided, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing it. So then I that's when I, you know, I, I buy if I buy a watch, then I immediately I, I bring it on the channel and then I, I wear it and I do a review or whatever. Um and now I'm you know, I, I'm in touch with brands and they're they're lending me watches and, and stuff like that so and of course thank god i'm, I'm in touch with you because you said you will uh send me some I watches have, through i have a couple well. watches in the back that you can always review and uh, yes. borrow for sure right. yeah absolutely that's cool so if you uh you know being that you're in it now over a year and you've had quite a bit of experience and uh you know what what would you say about you know somebody says to you look i'm looking to do it I think I have, I think I have the chops to put myself out there. You know, what would, what would you tell them to do? I mean, just dive right in. Honestly, honestly I, my, my advice to anybody is, um, and, and people have asked me, I have friends they are like, Oh wow. I, you know, you, you have 4,000 followers now. How to, you know, how did you do that? And what, I mean, 4,000 is not a lot when you look at other channels, but it, it is a lot for one year for one person. And I, I think a lot of people who watch YouTube don't understand that. 
Yes. And that's the thing. So, so um, it is difficult, but the thing is, and, and I, you know, those videos that I made in my bathroom, um, you know, they, they may be terrible, but I put them out there yeah. and that's all I have to say. Just do it and you'll get better as you do it. Yeah. And people are going to make fun of you. And if you can handle that, then just keep doing it and, yeah. and keep going. Um, if you really enjoy it, but don't do it. If you don't enjoy it, there's no reason to, because you're not, you're not, you're not, gonna <laughs> you're not going to get rich doing this. You're not going to get rich doing it. It's, <laughs> it's something that's fun. Um, and likes for situations like this, like I said, talking yeah. to you, that's it. Um, I, I did a, I think my, one of my third, third or fourth videos, I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do a video where I'm talking to the camera. Big mistake. Big mistake. <laughs> I, first off, I was about 60 pounds heavier than I am now. I lost 60 pounds over the last uh, year and a half. And, uh, you know, the comments, man, I was just like, this guy is like, I, I was nervous. You know, I was on, I never did it before. It's tough, you know, and, and you just have to, you have to persevere. You have to go, you have to go through it and just do it if you want to do it. Do it for yourself. Enjoy it. And eventually uh, other people who like you or like your content, they'll be there. And if they don't, then they won't. And then you they'll, could just they'll move just on, move on. That's it. Yeah. Right that's on. it. That's all. That's all I have to say. Yeah. It's, it's, it's as simple as that really. Have, have you gotten any haters or trolls? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. There's one guy that I think just subscribed to my channel because he wants to tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> Bleep that out. I'm sorry. No, but that's okay. I'll, I'll say I'm going to let that run. Uh, there's <laughs> another, there's a guy that, that literally just every time, I, I upload a video. He will, he will just tell me how bad the video was. And, uh, you know, I'm like, we'll have okay. to talk about that off camera. Cause I, cause we have one of those and I wonder if it's the same freaking guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it just, it, it, he just like, uh, it just, I, I don't know why, you know, why waste your time guy? Why, oh. why are you, why are you waiting for me to upload a, a video? I to, find it comical. Me? I, I, I find it comical. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> but it I, is funny. But I also find it as a badge, man. I mean, you know, you've hit a milestone when you get your hater, your troll. Yes. You know, yes. and when someone is when someone has decided to uh, waste <laughs> part of their day to just try and make your day a little bit worse. Yahtzee. That's when you know. That's when you know you're you're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, you just rolled a five of a kind. You got it, Yahtzee. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. So, yeah. what is um. What is the plan for the channel? Do you have a plan for the channel or is it just, you're just going to keep rolling? I'm just going to keep rolling right now. Uh, the, the plan is what I like and what I love to do is to get new watches on the channel. I love to handle new watches. Um, and sometimes I'm low, I'll be lent in a watch from, from, uh, as a was an, a, a watch company that's easy a automatic is a, is a automatic. Uh, it's like a, I, I think they're located in Holland. They lent me a watch in. I love the watch so much that I, I'm probably going to end up buying the watch off of them. Um, and you know, I, I just want to introduce new watches, new brands, uh, talk about new watches, talk about, uh, talk about the watch market. I like talking about that. Um, talk about Seiko, talk about my favorite brands and, um, and just have an avenue to, uh, for, you know, discussion really. That's it. Cool. And then eventually uh, if it goes, if it goes anywhere beyond that, uh, you know, one day maybe get involved with, uh, a micro brand in some way, I would love to do that. Uh, but I think a lot of people say that, and I, I think it's a lot harder than it is to, than, it's than it. Yeah, it, it's like it's like building a, a huge YouTube channel. It's a lot more difficult than what right. appears to be on the surface. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because uh, my, my good friend Chris Vale and I from uh, Chris from NTH, we we have a course we call Microbrand University. And uh, it's it's very, very, very interesting because there are so many people who just say, all right, they come with, you know, their pad of pad and a paper and not, not the guys who have really attended the classes because those guys really are a bit more committed, but you know, people, I just, in my head, I say they, they show up with an empty pad of paper. I'm like, all right, what do I do? You know, it's like, well, it's really between the production, the manufacturing, the looking for manufacturers and suppliers. And there's a lot to it. There's a lot yeah. to it, but yeah, I can um, imagine. 
it's it's a cool cool segment of the industry because I always I always compare the micro brand space to micro brews, and I'm a big fan of beer. And um, you know, micro brews are our passion projects. And I find that's what most micro brands are as well. So it's an interesting space. Yeah. So, very cool. Imagine. So aside, aside from the YouTube channel, do you have any other uh, social where you focus on? I mean, do you do Instagram, Facebook? Uh, Instagram. My Instagram is watch Chris blog. And then I also have watch Chris blog.com, which is essentially just all of my YouTube videos. Eventually, if I, if I actually have time, uh, I might start writing some articles because I really I, I do write all of my reviews usually, um, and I, I might start writing articles on on my blog. But right now it's just it's just there. I, I upload all my videos there, right? Um, and and that's it. But on on Instagram is Watch Chris Blog, and um, I, I do uh, you know I post pictures of all the watches that I'm going to be reviewing and all watches from my collection, uh, things like that. But We'll put the links to everything in the description below, uh, you know, at the end of this for sure. Thank you. All right. So I want to do something I can, I call rapid fire here. I'm going to ask you a couple of quick questions. You can get into long answers if you want, but it's more in the lines of quick, you know, what do you got? So uh, what is the, your favorite watch you've ever, ever, ever owned? I would have to say the SBDC 061 by Seiko and the only reason why is because it's an all around good looking well made watch um and yeah there's problems like bezel alignment which every Seiko suffers from which is <laughs> you know and mine does um but it's just a classic watch and I, I just I the moment I saw it the moment I got it in my hands I fell in love with that watch cool. and yeah, it's, it's one watch that I have never considered getting rid of. All right, very cool. And do you trade a lot? This is not a rapid fire. Do you... I, trade, I trade my watches a lot, um, but not an incredible amount. So uh, a lot of times I'll be sitting around and I'll see a watch that I want to buy. And I tell myself, if you want to buy that watch, you have to sell a watch. Right. Uh, and, then I, and then I have to always find the runt of the litter right now. And usually sometimes I just can't. And I just look at my collection. I'm like, there's not one watch. I want to get rid of. So, <laughs> so you weigh, I got it. I totally yeah. get it. All right. If you have to name your favorite complication in a watch, what would that be? And why? That's a good question. Uh, I guess a GMT because it's useful. Um, but I will, I would say, and this is not because I use it a world timer. I, I love world timers. Uh, and I like the way they look. And a lot of people hate world timers because they, it, it, you know, a dial could look very crowded uh, from, a, you know, putting the world time complication, having all the, the cities on the outside, right. and, then, and then they would put a map in the middle. I, I really love it. Yeah. I, think I, I think a lot of them are actually works of art. A I lot agree. of them are world timers with enamels. And I, and, and I told you I have, a Vash, I have two Vacherons. I have a, a I have a Vacheron overseas world timer, and I have a, a Vacheron uh, traditional uh, rose gold world timer, and they have a Lamford map on the on the. I love it. Like, and even though it's a very popular, I, I want to get a Patek Philippe uh, one day uh, world timer with. Okay. Yeah. So, but those are very expensive. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, but sure, absolutely. Yeah. All right. And uh, that leads us to Grail Watch, man. What's the Grail Watch for you? What's, what's unlimited check, you know, American Express, American Express black card, you don't have to pay back. What's the one watch? Good question. Oh, man. This is going to take some thought. I, you know, I have a lot of Grail watches. Uh, it's just, I have someone once described my collection as a dog's breakfast okay you know what that means I don't. I remember it's in english it's it's someone from the uk who said that okay so basically a dog will eat anything for breakfast <laughs> like, no matter breakfast dog's dinner right right uh a, if you put it in front of a dog he's gonna eat i'm i'm the same way uh, yeah. i see watches and every watch is like my grail watch you know um you know I, i'm a big moser fan h poser and, and they just came out with their chronograph 
that is a bracelet, integrated bracelet. I love integrated bracelet watches. Mm -hmm. The Streamliner, I think it's called. Yes. Uh, and it has the same movement that's in uh, Singer watches. It's that, uh, I forgot the, the company that actually makes them, but it's, it's, um, it's brought in by, by Moser and they, and they, uh, they, they put it into, the, it has, it's sort of like a bullhead chronograph. Yeah, sure. I, I, absolutely. Spanish Rob had it, uh, has had yeah, it. I was, I was now, just going to say I, Spanish Rob actually, I think did a review of that and yes. Mm, and yeah. I love that watch. And that is uh, definitely a grail watch. I think uh, it's a very slick watch. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to drop the links to the channel, to your Instagram, as well as the website in the description below. Anything at all you want to tell the audience before we sign off? No, check out my channel. Well, it's uh, Watch Chris. Uh, if you like watches, and I, I talk about a wide array of watches from, like I mentioned, Casio and Seiko, micro brands, to Omega. I have Roger Dubuis and, and Vacheron, and I, I get a whole bunch of stuff, and, uh, and uh, I'm a big Panaristi and I have a lot of Panerai and stuff. And I also uh, release a lot of news because I like watch news. So I, I do videos about watch news and stuff like that. So uh, if you're interested in, uh, in, the, in the channel, just uh, stop by. Watch Chris. Is yeah, the it's, it's a great channel. Uh, I've, like I said, you and I, I guess, met a few uh, handful of weeks back and I've seen a handful of episodes. And, uh, and I, I love personally, I love the fact that you, you get as stoked about a $50 watch as you do about a $50,000 watch. Cause that's exactly how I am. And, uh, so everybody check out, watch Chris. I'm sure that you will probably see him, uh, around the watch with us community for a while and, uh, popping in on videos and maybe doing some events once the world opens up and events start happening again, uh, coming along with us for that stuff because he is so local and he's a great dude. So, uh, Chris, man, on a Saturday evening, it's pushing 10 p.m., man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your evening and your weekend to hang with us, brother. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. And, yes, I, I definitely would like to get involved with Watch With Us, uh, so let me know. And, uh, obviously, WatchGage.com, I'm going to uh, definitely uh, – I'll, I'll be getting some watches from you, hopefully, to get to uh, review, and I'm an excited yeah. – uh, I'm excited. Uh, you know, and we spoke about this the other night. I mean, once – again, once we're allowed to uh, not be so socially distant, you know, we'll do some live videos together, and, yeah. you know, again, you're a half hour from me. So, so uh, as a channel, as an audience, you guys can look forward to that kind of stuff. You'll look forward to it here on Chris's channel and on the Watch Gage channel. So – Thanks again, man. And uh, we really, truly appreciate you uh, taking the time. Thank you. Fun. Thank A lot of fun. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.